G'day there, everyone. Daniel Anderson here. Now, the most common request or functionality of any intranet is a people searcher or people directory, and that is the focus of today's video. We're going to build a really simple people search uh, that you can use in your intranet or across any department site or any site in your environment. Now, we're going to use what's called the PNP Modern Search Web Parts. Now, if you're not familiar with this, navigate to this URL the PMP Modern Search or just Google it, jump into that URL, you can download it and you can in install it. There's installation instructions there. We need to install it and deploy it to the app catalog. There's some API requirements around this as well. So you can jump into there and you can enable uh, those in the admin center. Okay, so let's quickly go through uh, the install process, how we add it to our app store and how we enable that. So you can see here that I'm in the SharePoint admin center. Under the more features section, we've got this option here uh, called apps. So I'm gonna open up the app store here, and this is where we need to, after we've downloaded the SPPKG package, we just need to upload this into the app catalog here, and you can see apps for SharePoint. I'm just gonna drag across the package, and it's going to upload this item. So what we're gonna do here is enable this, um, this group of web parts to so that we can use that in our sites. So we can see here, and I mentioned before about the API access. So this data, uh, this app gets data from SharePoint. Here's the API access that must be approved after we enable this app. Um, so we'll have a look at where we do that as well. Now we've also got the app availability. So we can only enable this app. So you can see here by selecting this option, it makes the app available for site owners to add it from the My Apps page. Or we've got enable this app and add it to all sites automatically so it's there for everybody to use. So I'm just going to use only enable this app and then I'm gonna click that button. Now it's gonna take a minute or so just to enable and then we'll jump into the API section and we'll, we'll have a look at where we need to enable those specific uh, API settings there too. All right, so that's been enabled now and you can see that we can go directly to the API access page. So I'll click this button and then I'll be taken and directed to the API access page where I'll have a list of API um, entries that I then need to go ahead and enable. So that's that's just loading up now and you can see here that we've got 14 of these that we can go through now select each one and approve each one and then once we've done that then we've got um, all the all the groundwork all the uh, prereqs ready to go so that we can start to configure it so let's go ahead now and start configuring so let's build out a new page for the specific purpose of a people search so I'm going to just choose the blank web part We'll click create. We'll give this um, a name called people directory. Let's just add a little image across the top here as well. Uh, so we'll go to stock images. Let's just try and find one for search. And we'll just use that one there and we'll insert that. All right, so let's just delete this web part and let's now construct our page. Now I wanna have a search box across the top. I want our refiners or our filters on our left-hand side and I want the search results on the right. So up in this top section, let's pop in the search box. So you can see here that once this has been deployed, so to, to deploy it, we go to add an app and then we've got the ability to add the PMP search web parts as an app to this site. So I'm going to add the search box on the, up the top here. I'm going to choose on the left, we're going to add the filters and then on the right hand side, let's add the search results. Okay, so that's the building blocks. So Let's configure this search results web part first. So we'll click on configure. Now we've got two available data sources. For our people search, we're going to use the SharePoint search. Okay, and then from the result source ID here, now there's a lot of settings in this web part. We're not gonna cover off all of them. We're just gonna cover off a few major ones here to get us up and running. So the result source here, the default is the local SharePoint results. So we're gonna change this because we do have a result source called local people results, okay? And then that is going to just pull back and change the scope of our search, okay? So we can see down here, there's more settings uh, that we can configure down here, but we're going to click across to the next pane here, and we're going to choose because we've got a default layout here for people as well, all right? 
So now that that's configured, what we want to do also is choose the input query text. All right, so we want to connect our search box to our result source. So when somebody types in something in the search box, it's going to then uh, connect the results to that search. We're going to choose dynamic value and we're going to uh, connect to the search box for our source. Okay, the search box properties is going to be the search query. Let's choose a default value of star. All right, so the asterisk here, you can see that automatically here we've got our results coming through. All right, now while we're here, we're going to configure and connect to the filters web part. So we're going to toggle this to on and we're going to select our filters web part, which is the one on our left. We haven't configured that yet, but let's connect it in any case. So the filters is going to give us the ability to say, show me everybody from marketing or show me everybody from finance, for example. So let's connect that while we're here. We're good to go there. Now let's just pop back. Um, one of the things that I do like to do also when we're creating these is have the sort setting set for us. So more often than not, we want to sort by last name. All right, so let's just pop in last name as the field name. It's the default sort. Let's keep it as ascending and let's allow the user to sort as well. We'll hit save and you'll notice here that we've now got a sort by box at the top, uh, which we could add another or multiple different properties here. They do need to be uh, sortable though. So as a managed property, they do, they do need to be sortable um, and just uh, make note of the filters web part. They do need to to be refinable uh, managed properties in the search schema, okay? So they need to be refinable. Now, you can see we've got some results coming through here. Now, each of these web parts has its own set of properties. So if I jump up to the search box, you can see here that this only has a couple of different, um, different properties here. We can um, put a default text to display in the search box. So we could go search for someone and that will uh, appear as the, the placeholder text inside of the search box there. All right, so let's give this a test. So I'm gonna publish this. We haven't connected our filters yet, but let's have a look at our search. So I sh what, we, what we can do here is we can go uh, search for Deborah, and you can see that those two are now connected. All right, so our search is working nicely. We've got our sort, uh, our sorting here. It's defaulting sorting by uh, last name. And then we can change that order if we wanted to as well. So we can go up or down. You can see that the user has the ability to do that. Now let's go and configure our filters now. So one of the main filters and one of the more common filters that we want to have in our people directory is being able to search or filter by department. So we want to now connect our filters to our search results. So we can see here, the, we need to use the data from the search results web part. So now we did connect it in the search results web part. We connected and using the filters. We need to do it here as well, all right? And this button here allows us now to be able to build out our filters. So let's pop in department. Now, and the filter field here is going to be department because department is already a managed property that is refinable. So let's now pop in checkbox uh, and let's expand it by default and we'll hit save. So what we'll have now on the left hand side is our departments. Let's republish this and let's give this a test. So let's say somebody comes here, doesn't know who's part of the marketing team. So let's now uh, pop down here and we'll select marketing. So the results here now are scoped and filtered out of all of our employees. We've now only got the marketing people. And then I can search for a particular person in marketing and then that person is has now um, appeared there. Now. An additional bit of uh, functionality here is being able to, when we hover over a person, have their profile card picked up as well, or hover on hover, have that appear. So I'm just gonna edit the page here, and I'm gonna go back to our search results web part. 
Now, what we can do if we get if we scroll down, you can see that we've got lots of different settings that we can have here. So audience targeting, localization, we can change the number of items per page and we can show the pagination and things like that. The next page here is where we are going to um, set a couple of things. All right, so you can see we've got the component size, so we can make these small, regular, extra small, large. So we've got a few different configuration options here. Let's make these regular, and this is where we wanna show the persona card on hover. So when we hover, you can see now that we've got the profile card appearing when we hover. Now you will notice here that this feature uses the graph, okay? So display the information about the user and uh, you do need to have these API permissions. So when you deploy the PMP search web parts to the app catalog, you do then, if you want to use these type of features, jump into uh, the admin center and, and allow these API permissions and just enable those for these type of things to work. All right. So now what we've got, if I republish, we've now got a search box. All right. And you can see we've just changed the layout here. But when I hover, I now have the ability to show the whole persona card as well uh, as just the, the, the default options. We can do our search. So we can go, I'm searching for Grady. Uh, and you've got that capability there. And you can see that he's part of the, he's a designer, part of the R&D team. So the other thing that we've just hooked up also, show me everybody out of engineering. Now, what if we've got a page or a department page that we want to dynamically show the members of that particular department, all right? So more often than not, we want to display that um, so that people can know who is part of that department, all right? So let's create a new page. And again, let's just create a blank page. And this time we're going to, all we're going to do is add a search results query to this page. So I am going to choose a vertical section on the right hand side here. Let's just build this page out a little bit. Um, let's choose uh, this image here and let's call this the, let's call this the marketing team. All right. So when somebody lands on the marketing department page, we want to present them with the marketing team. So rather than have to manually do this, we want to say, right, just put a web part on the page, show me everybody that um, department field is marketing. All right. So all I'm going to do is use the search results web part in this, in this case. We're still going to use the search, the SharePoint search. Okay, now we're going to, again, change the result source ID to local people results. Now, in this query template, let's now pop in department contains marketing and let's apply that. So let's just close the brackets. So we'll just move across here, get rid of that. We'll pop the closing brackets on there and we'll apply that. Okay, so now what we've got is Miriam, Graham, Megan, uh, and Alex that are part of the marketing team. Now, we wanna display, they're displayed as cards at the moment. So remembering that we've got this available layout and we've got the people layout here like so. Okay, so let's keep this a little bit smaller. Now we can see that we've got uh, three people. Now we might wanna not show the results count. So let's go uh, meet the team, but we do want to show the persona card. All right, so here, let's show the persona card um, and let's publish our page. So now we've got a page that automatically shows us the marketing department, the marketing team. So here we've got, um, when we hover, we can see that we've got all of our uh, hover card properties uh, and our persona card hovering over the top there. So that means that we don't have to edit this web part as long as the department field is marketing or contains marketing, then those people are going to, um, are then going to appear in this web part dynamically and automatically for us. Just to test that, let's go engineering, right? So this should display different people. 
So we've got now got the engineering team as part of this uh, this web um, this listing here as well. All right. So using the P and P search uh, web parts, uh, deploying that, you can see that we can quickly and easily uh, create and customize some search experiences. We looked at the people here, but think about policies and procedures and documents and things like that. So being able to add these web parts onto a page really means that we can start to configure and create some search experiences that uh, for your users that allow them to find content and information nice and easily. But just remember, we need to also make sure when we're, when we're looking at the refiners and the sorting uh, properties that they do need to be obviously managed properties and they do need to be sortable or refinable as well. So thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.